Hello, hello. Welcome to the Total Connector Show. My name is Kay van der Vani from Vienna, Austria. Um, my very special guest is Zia from Iran. I've been waiting for this talk for, for some time now. Zia, thank you so much for, the, for your time and coming on my show for the first time. How are you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Zia, uh, so as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm myself sort of um, myself Iranian. I was born in Iran in, in the city of Shiraz. I came here uh, to Austria uh, at that time, 1979, um, to Austria with my dad. My dad doesn't live anymore. He, he died uh, a year ago. So I, I also, you know, hardly speak any Farsi, like Iranian language. Uh, I wish it was a little, little bit embarrassing sometimes, uh, you know, when I interact with, uh, you know, Iranian people, uh, if I do interact with Iranian people. So um, there's a lot of, you know, I have a lot of questions. I, I don't have much insights what's going on in Iran. You know, I care about, uh, I still have some family uh, in Iran. That's my, from my mother's side. And what I want to know and also share with my listeners and or viewers is, you know, maybe you can share your insights uh, you know, the bigger picture, what's going on in Iran, uh, especially in, um, in connection with the sanctions, the embargoes that have been going on for not only years, but actually decades. <laughs> so, yeah, um, give it a, uh, it's your floor. Um, tell, me, tell me a little bit, little bit about you um, and your path to Bitcoin. Okay. So, uh, well, I started as uh, like as a technical guy with the hardware in bitcoin i started like in late 2016 early 2017 that's not very old <laughs> it's not as what others say a bitcoin og i'm not that kind of guy but like i i i, I was attracted but it's it's a very uh, beautiful thing so i yeah uh, it, uh I was absorbed in it. I, I was down the rabbit hole actually. <laughs> and after a while that I was reading about Bitcoin, I, I, I loved it. And uh, well, I, I, I studied English literature actually in, in, in university. So it was very interesting for me to see uh, a technical, a, tec a technological phenomenon, which is, <clears throat> which have uh, like, a lot of uh, philosophical and like uh, social aspects like this that I can like relate to. So uh, af af after a while, uh, because like I, I knew a bit uh, about like computer parts and hardware and all of that. So I helped uh, a number of friends to build mining rigs and all of that stuff. And after a while, so I was absorbed into the concept because, like, I, I, I loved it. I, I read about it and, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, I started by, like, uh, watching uh, watching the best source, actually, maybe, uh, Andreas, Andreas Antonopoulos. Everybody knows him, I think, in the space. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he was a very good source for this, to, to start on Bitcoin. And then uh, later on, I was, like... Uh, more familiar with the works of people like Zabo and uh, other people who were very influential in this, uh, like in this movement, as a cypherpunk movement, the Bitcoin movement. Uh, people like uh, uh, like uh, people from the the uh, like uh, bef the before Bitcoin era, like you know, like Wei Dai and uh, like Adam Back. Uh, uh, I guess Adam Beck is still around, but uh, yeah, uh, from those guys. So I was very interested in, in what they did and what and how this uh, this thing became Bitcoin as we know it today. Uh, yeah, so uh, so I I, I I was very active in the Bitcoin community overall and and in the Iranian community and in the global community. Uh, uh, so I was very interacting with a lot of developers with a lot of projects like uh, uh, I love the guys from Samurai Relic because they're building the best thing that could happen to Bitcoin, privacy focused wallets and uh, like uh, we need them actually. The only thing uh, we, we 
we are uh, during a time of protests right now in Iran, so we were cut off from the internet completely. The whole uh, the whole country was shut down. So uh, and uh, the only Bitcoin wallet that was working was somewhere wallet actually because they had an SMS server. Yeah, and mm -hmm. they they built stuff. Yeah, they built use and that's that's very powerful that's very good so and uh yeah so uh yeah i i worked i i talked with a lot of people in this space and in, in, in the global space global space of bitcoin and uh so uh, because of this like active uh, participation i i got the chance to uh to talk with a lot of people and uh, know a lot of people and see how Bitcoin is uh, gradually moving forward in, in like in Iran, outside of Iran. I was able also to compare what's going on with Bitcoin outside of Iran and inside of Iran, and uh, what's the difference, uh, like how people use Bitcoin outside of Iran and how people use Bitcoin inside of Iran. And uh, so, like, there's there's one other thing that's uh, th this is this give me this give me very good like uh, uh, points about how how also the sanctions like work here in Iran on people and uh, what are the pot potentials from Bitcoin in, in this uh, like in this field what what Bitcoin can do for people here uh, so I was able to see this too and uh, it's uh, uh, yeah it's, so nowadays maybe Still, Bitcoin is not widely used for like uh, helping people uh, go around sanction, but it's going. It's it's growing on people. It's growing more and more. So if you, if I if I was to see my tweets from a year ago or two two years ago, I was saying the same thing because it's like it's it is true. It is growing. It's it is simply growing, and people are knowing it more and more. I see very like. Back in the days, it was uh, only uh, the technologists and uh, people with the computer knowledge. And nowadays, I see people, religious people, actually, too. <laughs> like, this is the last thing that I was uh, expecting here, you know, also using Bitcoin. Like, I see them buy and sell Bitcoin. I see them, uh, like, do transactions to uh, neighboring countries like Afghanistan and uh places like there uh, I, I see students because we see, speak the same language with uh, like very similar it's not the same but it's very similar to afghanistan so i see people from there like buying online courses because like may, they, there's i think that there's uh, i guess actually there's better uh education edu for material for online education here in Iran so they they use Bitcoin to buy this I, I see t-shirts I see uh, different I see people actually that's the point I see mm -hmm. people using it mm -hmm. not uh, like uh, maybe the government cannot use it and uh, I, I don't know if that's okay or not if the government can use it or cannot use it because the like this could be a good point that the government is kind of uh, stopped uh, from <laughs> being a very like doing uh, open and free transactions, especially the one we have here in Iran. But uh, maybe it's also a bad thing that Bitcoin is not uh, uh, ready enough for uh, big players like government to use it because. You know about the volatility, and you know about the all of the uh, other issues that may bring for them, like the liquidity if they like do want to do very big and large deals. But I see people uh, always uh, like I see people using it, and I see it uh, as a very powerful uh, tool for them. Yeah. 
So um, what, let me let me ask you, what is the, I mean, you know, in, uh, comparing the, the inflation rate to Zimbabwe is probably peanuts, right? I mean, it's still high inflation, right? Is What is it, like 20, 30 uh, percent? Uh, actually, rate? I don't know about the percent because there's no, <laughs> uh, there's no official rate here in Iran because, yeah, you know, maybe you don't know how Iran works, actually. I, I'm going to say this for the listeners, like, Something with data and research and all of this stuff, it's, it's very rare to happen here, you know, because, like, the best thing for them is to keep uh, keep the data, uh, yeah, uh, covered and they, they don't reveal the data. But uh, I know that uh, we, like, the part, uh, the, like, I think uh, comparing to three years ago, we've lost, uh, like three hundred percent of uh, wow. the price of uh, yeah, Iranian real. So mm-hmm. one USD was uh, thirty thousand real, and now it's like uh, more than ten thousand real. So it's more than three hundred percent. Yeah, and uh, this this happened like a few years before that. It was. 10,000 real and it become 30,000. So we're going by the number of 300 to 400% every couple of years. It's, uh, that's how we lose the uh, value of Iranian real here. And that's actually bad. That it was actually one of my motives to like hold, uh, hold my, uh, yeah, hold my, uh, the, the, the amount of, money that I have, I, I mostly hold it in Bitcoin because like, it's more reliable. Like this. Yeah. It's yeah. logical. <laughs> it's yeah. really logical. Yeah. Um, like if, if like people say that Bitcoin loses a lot of like like has a lot of fluctuations and it loses price and all of those stuff. But uh well for us it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't lose price. And there are people who say that uh because of the Bitcoin fluctuation, uh, maybe USD is better for you guys. But you holding USD here in Iran is very difficult. First, mm. it's very it, it's it's a bit difficult nowadays to get it, like in cash. And second, it's very difficult to keep it safe, <laughs> mm-hmm. because like uh, you heard about how people in Venezuela, uh, like maybe may like there there is a lot of uh, it's it's very risky to hold like money on you especially usd because it's worth a lot so it, it could happen here too because it's very easy to take it and go <laughs> yeah so it would be a bit dangerous and also there is uh, i haven't seen any signs of this law being uh, like being uh, practiced but uh there was a law two, two years ago it was it was uh, it was decided that if anyone holds more than ten thousand uh, dollars, it's a crime to hold more than that. So yeah, yeah, they've enacted so it's, that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. I mean, in some countries now, um, isn't that like something? Um, isn't it even in, in Australia they've enacted a law something like that? That uh, you know you cannot, or was it just? I'm not sure whether it's was just a draft of a law or a proposal. But it's really getting crazy. I mean, even in so-called Western, you know, yeah, developed I, whatever countries. Yeah. So basically, it's uh, there are some uh, like obstacles in regard mm-hmm. to uh, holding USD. Uh, but uh, they and also you can't like I I I, I barely like I think there was one or two incidents in my life that I saw a USD bill from very close. <laughs> so I, I, I saw it like and, and they took it in my hand. So I cannot uh, like uh, distinguish the fake one from the original one. But right. I know how to distinguish the, <laughs> like uh, an original Bitcoin from a fake one. Uh, so this, this may be not be for all people, but it was not working for me. Yeah. So, uh, the, yeah, the so that's gold another gold. advantage of Bitcoin, the assayability, yeah. like also compared to gold, like how do you verify, validate or assay it, like uh, confirm the, the, yeah. the, the authenticity of it. Like even in Europe, you know, the, I heard that the, the one note, the one euro note that is being most counterfeited is 
uh, the 50 euro notes. So <laughs> just for your information. Uh, so, uh, Zia, um, uh, Zia, so there, um, let me correct me if I'm wrong, there are 80 million people in Iran, right? Eight zero. Approximately. Uh, come again? Uh, it was. Like... Uh, there are approximately 80 million people in Would you say uh, that again? Are there 80, 80 million people in yeah. Iran? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, from those eighty million, yes. what do you what do you you know uh, what do you estimate uh, are the number of, of of users or or in any kind? Would it be because of capital control, because of sanctions, because they want to you know put it in a store you know a sort of a store of value? Do you have like any kind of estimates or guesses? Um, For people who use Bitcoin, mm -hmm. in any shape or form. Uh, well, it's it's very difficult to do, do such a cal calculation and give give a number. It's it's like uh, like I I've been in Iranian communities and I know that there are like I, I always get proved to be wrong as to know the numbers of like for people who are uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, are using Bitcoin or not because like I see like a very big group of people that they don't use online communities and like I, I would always say where have you been all this time like I never saw you guys it's that this is one of the beautiful things about Bitcoin it's it's a, it has a very, very low barrier to entry and everyone can enter it so uh, like judging on the communities there are like uh, groups of uh, on on like we mostly uh, like Iranian people mostly live in Telegram groups. <laughs> so really, this is okay. this is the yeah we the the main thing here uh, for online communities in Iran is Telegram, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, like uh, judging on Telegram channels and Telegram groups, and uh, uh, I could say that it is at least like in the tens of in the in the tens of tens tens of thousands because like there are uh <clears throat> there are telegram channels with more than like twenty thousand people who follow the news on bitcoin <clears throat> there are like telegram groups with like thousands of people with hundreds of people being online every day and this is like very good numbers <clears throat> we didn't have such numbers like three, four years ago. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Like, if if we if we go back to like three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the, like the biggest uh, telecom group that I knew in Iran was like having more like about like two or three thousand people in it. But uh, now now there are like multiple groups who have at least this amount of people in them so i would say like uh people who have transacted with bitcoin and use bitcoin maybe um they may be like more than ten tens of thousands but i can't give like an estimate of millions or something sure it sure would be mm -hmm. yeah it would, that would be a lot of like a very big number but uh, it, it can it, it is not very far because it's far fetched because like I, I I get always proved to be wrong. <laughs> I told you, yeah. No, I can, yeah, I can. I mean, I can. Uh, I can imagine it's difficult to make such. I just wanted to know you. What's your, like, what is your perception like around <clears throat> yeah. in your environment? Because there's also, I guess, you know, people who are let's say more affluent or rich, also rich people in Iran. So, I, do you think they're more conservative, like you know, putting the, the also the the money into gold or more conservative assets or? Uh, do you, do you think there are like a lot of maybe even younger people from you know richer families, uh, whether they are you know they're from the religious, uh, you know, whatever yeah. elites, or you know oligarchs <coughs> of Iran? Yeah, I like there are I've I've seen people who are very <coughs> very rich in this space so uh, go like all in on Bitcoin, but. I can see say that it, the number is very big because uh, like most of them, even if they get into Bitcoin, like they haven't become rich like 
<laughs> like in one night <laughs> because you know they, they have experience like in diversifying and studying it before uh, like putting all their money into it so i know rich people who like hold a small part of their wealth in bitcoin because like they believe in it they believe that it could have a future but they can't go all in and also there there are a lot of them who have businesses and they need like to keep money which is always liquid and yeah in, which could be circulating uh, in bank accounts and all of that. So uh, from the business aspect, Bitcoin is not very good for doing business. As, uh, but uh, for those who want to store it and uh, <clears throat> see, uh, like have it as a stored value, it, like, it shows itself there. Okay. Yeah, but but there, there are like, people from every like uh like i was very very surprised last year because i got to know more people and i was connected to more people and uh, like uh, i worked with people who uh like do bitcoin exchanging and bitcoin buying and selling like many uh bitcoin exchanges so i i worked with them closely and saw what they they are experiencing every day with people who do mining and uh, mining equipment and all of that, like you cannot imagine, like, uh, like <laughs> it's very, like, uh, very, very odd. And what you see here, what you see people from any, any, any class and any place you could imagine, like you see teachers who buy mining equipment, you see families who buy Bitcoin for the uh, for their young young uh, children uh, to hold for them, uh, you see people who like who do not know anything about Bitcoin, but because like they 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 say they only know how to set up a wallet and uh, they want to have Bitcoin, but they don't know much about it. Like <laughs> there's a very very fast uh, like it it has a very good penetration factor in, in, in here and you know because uh, and the younger generation like how old like uh like i've seen very old people also okay and, like yeah i know that people celebrities also like <laughs> uh, people from the television and all of that yeah i've seen also the, those guys buy bitcoin or all or some of them who want to trade and they have money on their like they have extra money they can lose so they want to trade like all coins uh so they go and <clears throat> maybe buy some alt coins also but uh like there are there are stories that you cannot like imagine uh, before coming here regularly like there are there was this this uh woman i i saw uh she she was uh, dealing with an exchanger and I asked her, what are you doing with this Bitcoin? Like, she was like 50 or so, 50 years old. She said that I'm buying this. Uh, in, like, my, my kids, uh, she, she meant like her, her daughter and uh, her new, what, what do you call it? Her husband, uh, like her daughter, daughter was getting married. So... You know, there's something in Iran here, like they, they buy uh, stuff for their daughter so they could, uh, so, so, so that their daughter can start her new life with her husband. So mm -hmm. her daughter convinced her mother to buy her Bitcoin instead of those like uh, house equipment and all of that. So they were thinking that uh, they could uh, like live on very minimum uh, and hold Bitcoin instead of that. And I think it paid off because this was like uh, when Bitcoin was $2,000 now. Really? Yeah. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's fascinating. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I remember this from like three years or four years ago when Bitcoin was $2,000. So I heard, I, if, if, if the girl still is keeping the Bitcoins or if she sold like in higher numbers, now she could maybe buy a house also, not only yeah. house equipment. Amazing. Yeah. I, like this is this is something that I cannot imagine happening. But there are people from like this. There are people who 
like uh, who have failed in their workshops because of the economy. There are a lot of workshops. This is actually another thing about Bitcoin in Iran. Mining. So mining is very attractive here in, you know, in Iran because of What's the legal situation, if I may interrupt you? Uh, what, is, what is it? I mean, what's the situation? People are now allowed officially to mine, but is it restricted, regulated or uh, like? Yeah, it's, it's actually in the process of uh, like uh, emerging regulations. So they're deciding on the regulations, but uh, the last uh, the last update is that they they bumped up the price of uh, electricity here in Iran for miners. Oh, you mean uh, what I read? Is it true that they s cut the the subsidy uh, uh, of the of the electricity? Like like because for, I think previously they subsidized the electricity somehow. Well, electricity is still subsidized all over Iran. Uh, actually, this mm -hmm. is what they say. This is also another argument that. What is a subsidized electricity? Because here in Iran, you see that the the grid, the power grid, is very inefficient and it loses a lot of uh, like electricity. And uh, there's also one part where there's inflation, uh, and uh, these two factors uh, like influence the what the government calls subsidy. So there are a lot of people here in Iran that uh, they uh, like they don't believe that the electricity is subsidized. Actually, this is also an you know, argument from the government that like they're doing. Uh, it is called, I think, an opportunity cost or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I, I looked it up before in Wikipedia. I think <laughs> so. It's like it's, it, they say that the electricity in outside of Iran is maybe I don't know. Two cents, six cents, or something per kilowatt hour. Two cents. That's that's super cheap. That's like no. Really actually, we we have also cheaper than that here in Iran. Wow. I mean, outside of Iran, like uh, let's say that I don't know, or what's the electricity rate in Vienna? Well, uh, I, I just know the average. Like the average uh, is. I hope I'm not wrong on this. Is a, approximately like five cent is like average good price. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Or whatever kilowatt so, hour is that? Yeah. So the, the 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 government here calculates the price like they see the price of Vienna, and then they say that uh, here in Iran we are much cheaper than Vienna, so we are subsidizing it because <laughs> we could offer it in Vienna prices too. But mm -hmm. this is not the you, you see how flawed this argument is because there are a <laughs> lot of factors here. Yeah. So uh, that's what, uh, this is also one thing. This is the inflation part. And there's also the inflation part mm -hmm. where uh, like uh, they, they calculate the cents, but all the cents are always increasing in price. So <laughs> this is one also, this is so the more the inflation there is, the more the subsidy it is. <laughs> so this is, this is also wrong. Uh, I mean, so, oh uh, so disregarding the fact that uh, we don't know that how much subsidy there is and uh, what is kept with what is a subsidy in uh, Iran government's uh, opinion. So disregarding this fact, the what they say that the electricity here in Iran is subsidized and it is cheap. It is actually very cheap, but miners cannot use this cheap energy. They should pay more. So nowadays, uh, they. Uh, they they saying they are designing I think uh, a permit kind of thing, so you could go and get a license or a permit for mining, and then uh, you should pay more electricity, more more uh, a much more expensive electricity. It's about like I think four or five cents instead of like one cent. Mm -hmm. like it's it's uh, like industrial rate nowadays in Iran is one cent. So uh, you see the like. Uh, how a miner is not attracted to a five cent with a license, they will keep doing it uh, in a black, uh, in, a, in in underground situation. So I, I predict that this will keep going on, the underground situation, because most miners uh, won't apply for a permit to pay more electricity. I believe that this. 
but they are cracking down on such miners and in the last eight or nine months so it's been actually about a year now that they are cracking down on miners and they close or shut shut down farms they shut down a very big number of farms and they like confiscated a lot tens tens of thousands of devices from miners <laughs> so the, so the majority is still mining. So you could imagine how many miners there are. It's, it's a very big number. And there are miners who have only one, two, or three devices. So they are. these are... Oh, really? These are like yeah. small, like super yeah. small? Uh, yeah, it's, oh. it's actually, it's not also, it, it's not a farm or something. Like people who have like a very few devices, they put it in their homes or something. Uh, there are a lot of people who steal electricity from the grid, steal it, and then use it for mining. Uh, so they pay nothing. Uh, so when you see a failed economy, this happens. Like I've right. seen teachers exactly. doing this. You you may not believe it, but I've seen doctors do it actually here in Iran. Like doctors are well paid, but they still, uh, I think they have money issues nowadays. Uh, their business is not very good, maybe. But mm -hmm. I've seen doctors who do mining and uh, like they go rent a place and put some devices in it and start to mine. There are a ton of, a ton of workshops around Tehran who have gone bankrupt or, or are on the uh, verge, like they are very close to being bankrupted. So these these uh, workshops, they go and buy some mining devices and put them put them in their workshops because they have cheap electricity and they have a, a, an abundance of electricity. Like they could put maybe up to twenty or thirty devices. So uh, Zia, uh, this is amazing. I mean, I didn't know that this situation is like uh, like that bad. <laughs> like okay, so. Uh, let me let me ask you. Do you have? Is there like are there any numbers um, on on the mining um, aspect? Like, what are the average mi miners like? Are they, I mean, because you need equipment. I mean, where do they get? Do they get like secondhand equipment, or is it is it like the newest equipment? Where do they get it from? Yeah, it's very easy. It's all uh, it's all uh, a black market situation here. So everything black market in Iran works perfectly good. <laughs> so you could find uh, like people on different websites. You could find them on different Telegram groups, WhatsApp groups. They sell equipment. They sell used equipment. They sell new equipment. They sell all kinds of models and everything. So you could find workshops that do repair. They they repair like mining equipment actually. So you see a whole economy growing down on this so you can see people yeah we uh, we are uh, like we have a lot of difficulty here we have been having this situation like for tens of years now actually maybe more than 20 years that we cannot import more stuff into iran so there's a very good and big smuggling business going on ecosystem actually smuggling ecosystem down there in the south southern areas of iran where they import stuff from Dubai. So the, Dubai is a very big hub for like uh, a very big destination for most like cargoes. So they come to Dubai and they smuggle them with small boats into Iran. And this have been going on like for most stuff here in Iran, not only for miners. So uh, they import them and then they sell them in the, like in a very, it's actually a black market situation, yeah. With a so, with a markup, with a price markup, like sort of with a premium price on it, like do you, yeah, like, definitely because you <laughs> see that you need to like there's there's a premium on importing devices inside of Iran, which mm -hmm. is like smuggling them. That would make a twenty five percent maybe premium on, on on any kind of devices, like you name it, AC conditioners, televisions, anything, computer parts. It would take like a twenty five to thirty percent premium on any kind of device and there's also the second price for like you like you buy them from china from anywhere singapore any anywhere and you bring them to dubai and this is one cost and then you bring them inside of iran and this is the second one and then from the southern ports of iran you should 
bring them to Tehran. And that's also a very risky thing for smugglers. And uh, that also takes a cut on them. So this makes it, uh, yeah, on a premium like price. Uh, but it is available as uh, how everything all else here is available. AC conditioners, I don't know, TVs, anything, you name it. Like even like chocolate and candies, maybe uh, when they like smuggle them inside of your own, this is the situation. So we have a very flourishing smuggling business in Iran. This is, <laughs> this yeah, has well, been effect. Well, yeah, but it's understandable, but it's understandable. I mean, that's, that's why I asked, you know, about the, the situation in Iran regarding the, I mean, I care really about the people in Iran. I mean, because of the sanction embargoes going on, you know, the, I mean, it's beyond the pain points. I mean, what, what are people suffering? I mean, this is a huge suffering going on because there's lack of, I heard, lack of medicine, lack of, you know, all kinds of things. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit yeah, on that? Yeah, this is like, this is, this 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 never was something like, uh, ho like fortunately, this was not, not something that I never dealt with today until like, like to this point, um, I never dealt with something like this, like uh, needing like some medicine or something that, uh, yeah, uh, which is not available in Iran, but we see every day and uh, we see a lot of times like on social media, and people who hear, like we hear from people who like friends or, uh, or friends who have friends that like they need some kind of medicine that they cannot get uh, here in Iran. And I guess this is really the bad part about sanctions. We, we cannot go around it with Bitcoin or something. The physical deliverance of stuff, which is actually like you, you, you may find someone who accepts Bitcoin and sell you like medicine. But you cannot deliver them to Iran because it's very difficult to deliver stuff to Iran, like especially something like medicine, which could be, which they should like be kept in very good, very certain conditions to be delivered. And they need like special containers and all of that. So this is like something you cannot go over it, like delivering stuff to Iran is very difficult. Uh, sanction is still very effective on that aspect. There are not all, all only medicine, there are a lot of businessmen who are losing like money and like they, they're using their wealth uh, because of this, uh, they lose like cargoes or their cargoes are get cut or they have like uh, offshore bank accounts and their bank accounts are closed because they know that like they figure the bank, the bank in like in the foreign country one day figures out that he's an Iranian or she's an Iranian who, who is holding this bank account mm -hmm. and they close their bank accounts. There is a lot of money like who, who was, which was lost like this. I know a lot of people who lost a lot of money like this, like, they have bank accounts in China, in, I don't know, in, in the UAE, in, in, in Europe, who like all of their bank accounts get closed and uh, their money gets confiscated or frozen and they cannot use it. I know people who are still struggling to get back their money like from uh, Chinese bank accounts and all of that. Yeah, this is, this, this, this is in the business side, they, this is like very terrible. Like you cannot see a businessman who do does like international trade or something like that, who is uh, not complaining about the situation. Who is not losing money because of this. Yeah, it, it, like I was talking with a friend uh, he, like yesterday, and he he said that like regarding the protests, uh, some businessmen lost money because. Uh, uh, the prices of USD and dirham and other currencies around the like in, in this area and the region has gone up. So this is this is something happen which is very like uh, understandable. Like there's there's unrest in the country, so the money gets a bit devalued. So uh, and uh, they lost money regard because of this. Yeah. So, because of the like the situation right now in Iran, so this this happens a lot. Like even like I had the last update was yesterday. So you you can see how how this is like do this happen happens on a daily basis. 
this is amazing. So uh, let me ask you a bit before I forget uh, about the internet situation. Like, what, what, how do people, um, I mean, what is restricted, what is blocked? Um, you know, how, how do people circumvent this whole, you know, internet restrictions? And I mean, do you guys have, like, do, do people of Iran have normal access to, in, you know, normal internet bandwidth or what is restricted or is blocked? So we, we like, it's, it's, uh, so the start of uh, internet uh, censorship was about, I think, 10 or 12 years ago. So uh, from 12 years ago, internet uh, censorship regard, with regard to Facebook and Twitter and all of this stuff happened. And uh, we, we are accessing uh, like Twitter and all of these stuff through VPNs. Uh, for more than a decade now uh, but in like uh, there are a lot of actually s uh, websites which are blocked it's not only Twitter and Facebook it's like Twitter reddit uh, you name it like the most of the internet like I never actually turn off my VPN so it's much more easier this way because mm -hmm. most websites that I use are uh, censored so uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the number is growing day by day. Like if you see a website open today, uh, it will be censored maybe someday in the future. <laughs> so most websites are censored and we cannot access them unless we use VPNs. So the one of the most famous, uh, after Twitter, what, one of the most famous things that got censored was Telegram, mm -hmm. like uh, two years ago uh, in the, uh, in the days following the unrest, and but there were some kind, some uh, protests, protests again uh, two years ago. So they they censored Telegram because like people were using Telegram to communicate and all of that. But uh, still, people are using Telegram widely all over around because of this censorship, which is at, at which acts like a double-edged sword because more people get to know how to use VPNs. Even my grandfather knows how to use a VPN nowadays. And this is like, this cannot be imaginable in a European country, but here it's very actually very normal. Like you see all people who don't know anything about technology use VPN to send something in, in Telegram support. Necessity, yeah. out of necessity, yeah. right? So. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, my my grandfather knows that it, like open VPN works fine, but like, other VPNs may not work very good. So even they know about like VPN protocol sometimes. So <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So great. So uh, now uh, in the last, uh, we're still actually having a blackout on the internet right mm -hmm. now here in Iran. So ADSL and like uh, houses and uh, I don't know, like a business and all of those uh, places have, they regained their connection back. Uh, like we had, so for for the listeners who don't know about like, the situation in Iran, uh, 10 days ago, I think, nine days ago, uh, the internet was completely uh, shut down here in Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, eight days ago, I mean, one day after that, they only allowed people to use uh, the services from inside Iran, like you could do a banking like bank bank uh, transfer or something you could like get uh, like order something online like a, a, something from uh, a restaurant or something but you cannot like use anything you couldn't even use google you couldn't use gmail anything from outside of Iran. so of so, course people could not broadcast like, any kind of information or yeah, live streaming yeah, or anything definitely. right Okay. So after a few days, like uh, three days ago, actually, so uh, three days ago, they regained connection to uh, to uh, uh, non-mobile uh, devices. Like if you have an ADSL connection in your house, a broadband connection, a point-to-point -point connection, TDLT, FDLT, or something like that, uh, connections which are fixed and non-mobile they uh, now we regain like this is how i'm able to talk with you right now because there's internet for me in the office but uh, my phone 
does not have internet connection right now. Mm -hmm. This moment that I'm talking to you. And mm -hmm. the, it's, it's, it's not clear that where, when they are uh, going to reconnect the internet connections for mobile devices. Uh, so this is the situation right now. And uh, there are, uh, what, what do you say? How do you say it? There are uh, rumors about uh, this situation getting worse in the future. Like I told you that the censorship goes, like becomes uh, uh, more, uh, yeah, it, it becomes more, increases more and more every day. And there are more websites are, which are being uh, censored, but they are now doing some, uh, oh, how, do, how to say this, uh, they, they are gaining new techniques and new methods <laughs> on how to do censorship. They want to whitelist, there are, there are rumors nowadays that uh, they want to whitelist the services from foreign countries that you need to use. Like, you say that Gmail is very, uh, very. Uh, it's, it's it's a very necessary thing for people. So, don't close this. But other foreign IPs, any kind of server, any kind of IP that you may need to connect to, uh, others should be like should be blacklisted. And uh, this way, you cannot like set up a VPN for yourself. This way, you cannot access VPN services from like any in any way. This this whitelisting thing is very very scary. And actually, if this whitelisting thing goes on, we may lose like a very very big number of like VPN services because like they're gonna whitelist the, only the famous services, and any other unknown IP would be considered as uh, yeah uh, inaccessible. So you cannot use a VPN in that way and it, it would like become like a living hell here <laughs> to get a connection to the outside. This is incredible. I mean, what I even read, I'm not, I'm not sure whether it's a rumor or not, but that it's sort of a social class system that, you know, that people who are in a higher level of society or I don't know, privilege or more access to the whatever government the regime. Yeah. From the more... government, they have access to like, uh, Politicians like ministers of mm -hmm. the Iranian government uh, are present in, in Twitter, and they tweet all day. <laughs> like the uh, like ICT minister. Uh, yeah, the foreign minister, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Is he still active? The foreign minister all? also, yeah. <laughs> like most ministers, have uh, like uh, privileged kind of connections. They say that we're gonna go give such connections to journalists too but they are journalists of their own picking so you know exactly yeah, yeah. journalists who write in their favor mm -hmm. and uh, actually it gaining connection to internet is not difficult when you live like after a, after a decade of like censorship it's very easy you set up a vpn and this is that finished mm -hmm. but we are very afraid of this whitelisting thing and this whitelist if, if they carry on with this and they make such a thing it is very like uh yeah it's a very difficult situ situation to get a connection because we hide now like vpns you know how vpns work they they hide among other ips they, mm -hmm. you don't know which ip is a vpn and people are connecting to it to go around the censorship but uh, if you need to uh, declare that what is this IP, you cannot tell them that this is a VPN and I need to use it. So you can say them that, that tell them that this is a Gmail and I need it. This is, I don't know, uh, OneDrive, I think, like I need to use it for my work. This is like Google Sheets or this is, I don't know, Zoom or Skype, I need to use it. You can't tell them, but this is a VPN and I need to use it because it, like, VPN is like illegal. You cannot use it actually, but you're using it. So this way, uh, VPNs and the whole lot of services and servers from outside of Iran and all of that will get will be shut down because of this whitelisting thing. And I hope it, it it doesn't happen. I hope it stays a rumor because if this happens, we don't know how to counter this thing because it that's the last step on censorship. <laughs>
Oh my God. I mean, you know, if, if, if that happens, then you, I mean, I don't know, then we are even beyond middle ages. I mean, this is like total yeah. censorship. I mean, this it is would crazy. be like something like very similar to North Korea's <laughs> situation. Oh my, uh, incredible. Um, Zia, so, uh, you know what, what's so funny because, um, I was at the lightning conference in Berlin What was, was like, like, what, what was that? I forget the, the timing that was like in September, was October, yeah, a month ago, a month ago. Pro yeah. yeah. So I met, um, Rod, another Persian. So that's, that's how I found you. Actually, I, I asked him, mm -hmm. you know, whom I can talk to who has like a, you know, direct connection to Iran or inside or from Iran. And so he gave me, a, and then after that, I found an article. Uh, because he works for Bitcoin magazine and I, and they, you know, they were distributing this Bitcoin magazine. So, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, I was like, wow, that's the, that's an article even about you, you know, like here, you see, see this Bitcoin magazine. Oh. Uh, I don't know which, from which, uh, month or year, or whatever that, but it's, I think it's, uh, maybe a, a special edition or something. Anyway, this is what it looks like. And it, the, 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 the article is written by Col Colleen Harper. And the title is called When Fiat Falters. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's called When Fiat Falters, There's Bitcoin. And there's, uh, you know, uh, two pages um, mostly about you. And of course, yeah, about Venezuela, but about you quote, uh, being quoted about Iran. Um, and you're saying half a, wor half a world away in Iran. Uh, you, quoted, you quoted Bitcoin is a safe haven, according to Zia Sadr, an Iranian Bitcoin enthusiast and technology writer. Uh, do you remember, like, did you, do you know this article? Have you ever read it? Yeah, I think I remember what, what's it about, but, uh, like I talk with a, a lot of, like, I, I know Colin, I, I know Aaron from Bitcoin magazine, mm -hmm. talk to them a lot. <clears throat> but, uh, like I, I talk with a lot of people on this, uh, I, I actually, I, I was like, uh, uh, I, like I talked with, uh, reporter from the New York Times actually and I, I was on the New York Times too. Hey cool. Uh, all right. Yeah, on the New York talking about the mining situation in Iran and all. So it was a fun time. I, I, I had to a lot to teach him about Bitcoin. It was like he was very interested in Bitcoin, yeah. He <laughs> was, was a very good reporter actually. Uh, I, I was surprised mm -hmm. because most reporters are very like you yeah know? i was gonna yeah. say new york times i don't know yeah. it's like too yeah. mainstream but but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know if they're investigatively good um and then yeah it's also you also talk about you know the vpn stuff and you also say you also talk about and it says here bitcoin doesn't just just doesn't just empower its users with monetary sovereignty in iran it grants them with unrestricted access to the free web this allows Sadra to advertise his translation technical writing skills on freelance websites that pay out in Bitcoin. So freelancing uh, is actually sort of uh, done in Bitcoin for a lot of people then, right? Sorry, I'm losing your voice. Oh, okay. Uh, well, there's a uh, talk about uh, uh, freelancing. It's, uh, there's a talk about freelancing of a Bitcoin. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 and he says uh, freelancing for Bitcoin. He's uh, you're being quoted has become increasingly popular for Iranians looking for better wages than those they they can earn in reals. Uh, they already look for opportunities yeah, definitely. like this with foreign currencies. So, do you want to uh, like elaborate a little bit on on freelancing? Like, what what do, how do people like you know make money or or you know and look for jobs? Is that is that how they like, circumvent it? There's there's so I, I was talking about like uh, doing freelance work, but it's not uh, it's not limited to being freelancer. Mm -hmm. Like I know people who like work with Iran, like uh, people who like uh, like you need uh, some foreign talent. Uh, uh, like you need someone to work with with you like from let's say Italy and you pay them from here here from Iran uh, this also happens like I know a friend who have like four or five uh, employees from foreign countries and he works with them like this and pays them with Bitcoin but like uh, the attractive thing for of uh, getting earned in Bitcoin for Iranians is the diff is the different thing, like at what's the like minimum wage let's say in Vienna? It's it could be a couple of thousands, right? Uh, 
the state. Could be, uh, but yeah. you know, if you're in a lower range, then you know you might you might earn maybe per month like twelve hundred, maybe thirteen hundred. So you know, net net worth is like euro. Yeah, twelve hundred or something. That's that's like a hell of a lot of money here. Mm -hmm. So people from Iran like get uh, like minimum wage here in Iran is under two hundred dollars. So uh, wow. per month, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a very like if you if you if you're a student, you're 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 you want to get some like uh, you need money to pay for expense your expenses or yeah, maybe you want to have fun to like uh, yeah spend a, spend a little even if you work here you know you cannot even like it's very difficult even to buy a phone uh, it's uh, like the numbers are very uh, yeah it's it's like uh, in order, like, for someone to with with a minimum wage to buy an iPhone, it it would be like he should work for a whole year and does not spend anything from that money and buy an iPhone. Oh so <laughs> it's something like that. So uh, if you if you if you're a student and you have uh, some free time, you could like work with foreigners, do some translations, do content for their websites, do. Uh, Maybe even if it's your specialty, if you want to do a graphic design something, or if you're a developer, you you can work from far. Like it, not all works have this privilege to go like do work online, but there are a lot of uh, stuff that you could do online. Uh, and you, if you get paid in Bitcoin, uh, like uh, you could get in a week what you can not get in like two months. So. It's very attractive for uh, especially students and people who do freelancing stuff because freelancers are more uh, uh, more familiar with this uh, atmosphere. They know how to do work online from uh, and they know how to get clients and manage them. But uh, still, you could be working a full time job and getting paid in Bitcoin. I know a couple of friends, a very few friends actually, who mm -hmm. work with foreign company, and uh, they have a friend in that company who gets their uh, gets their income and exchanges for them to, into Bitcoin and sends it, sends them sends the money for them with Bitcoin. They are people who like they are developers and uh, system administrators, do network stuff, and uh, so it's technological. It's 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 actual technology based uh, works, um, uh, who jobs which which they can do online, and, and this way they they gain their like they 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 live. This is how they live. But it's not a very big number of people. Freelancers are much more because they are very easy. It's much more easier and much more flexible. They are very flexible for to do such kind of jobs. That's amazing. I didn't know that that, that, that like they get fully paid in in Bitcoin with a in maybe in a marginal number, but whether it be freelance technological sector or people who are working for foreign companies, yeah, it makes sense. Makes total sense. So they get yeah. Fully I, paid I, I was Bitcoin. I was yeah I was. I was paid in, uh, like numbers of times, like for doing work for, with like uh, for with a foreign company or foreign employer, and I was got uh, I was paid in Bitcoin. Like I, I actually I got most bitcoins. My like uh, most of the bitcoin I own is uh, from getting paid actually by Bitcoin. I it's very difficult to work here in Iran and buy Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not cheap. So, uh, it's, and what you earn when you work is very low. So you cannot buy Bitcoin in that way. It's, it's, it's very difficult. So getting paid in Bitcoin and uh, holding Bitcoin is much more easier. Actually, it has been easier for me. Mm -hmm. So Zia, when the if uh, if um, it seems like you know if if the situation worsens, uh, deteriorates, you know, in any uh, shape or form, socially, economically, or much harsher sanctions, even I don't know, maybe uh, uh, I hope not. You know that uh, I mean, I guess you know Iran can defend itself pretty good. Yeah, they are technologically advanced. What I heard, you know, from a conventional def defensive uh, um, uh, understanding, uh, but. I mean, there as you know, again, there are 80 million people in Iran, and I think I even tweeted about it once. 
uh, I, I would just wish, you know, if, if there were like a substantial portion of the 80 million people in Iran would just, you know, convert to Bitcoin, you know, would it be 5 million or 10 or 20 million people? That would, that would like really, I think, cause a shockwave through the, <laughs> through the monetary system or, or at least, you know, in a positive sense, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, do you see this uh, coming? Do you see this coming? Like in the next years to come? So I, I guess it's it's a very very uh, like let's say uh, when a, when a, when a when a country like fails to deliver what people want, and uh, it it becomes a failed country and a failed government. I guess that these stuff happen, and uh, I guess that. Uh, uh, before uh, like people like before we expect people uh, like to maybe like a 20 million people to use Bitcoin I guess the failed government maybe would disappear in that term because <laughs> if, 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 if it comes to the point where people need to use Bitcoin it could be a situation of like a complete chaos actually uh, that uh, there is no kind of uh, like uh, monetary system or something in that country where uh, like Bitcoin could shine uh, or Bitcoin could show itself that when there is no kind of system for doing online transactions in this country. So there's Bitcoin, you could use it. It's very easy to use it actually. So this is, the, I, I guess uh, that uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, the, the the failed government which may result in people using uh, like most people use Bitcoin would uh, probably go away before uh, all people need to use Bitcoin because yeah. Uh, yeah let's be honest it's not like people uh, like all people in the world could use Bitcoin Bitcoin is a form of money but it is not the one and only money that people would use there are all different stuff that I know that a lot of people do not even use money for their businesses. They do a barter kind of situation where like, especially this uh, thing with uh, international trade uh, here in Iran, people are not gold, not Bitcoin, not USD, not, not any currency could work with for them. They could only just use uh, like, they could only trade uh, what they have uh, on, on, on the board or to get, uh, yeah, to keep their business running. So it's uh, uh, if, if a failed government may actually uh, or would, would uh, accelerate uh, people, accelerate this thing that people use Bitcoin and uh, as they accelerated using VPNs here in Iran, it took it more than a decade, but nowadays you cannot find a person in Iran who does not know about VPN or have not used the VPN. So I could, yeah, say that uh, uh, publicly and say that very strongly that most people in Iran use VPNs and this is something which uh, the government has accelerated the, like, uh, the, learning process of so on 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 the matter of bitcoin yeah th that could happen also and it is actually somehow happening totally agree with you and uh, you know i mean uh, when you look at the history of iran uh and because i really care about the people of iran i don't i'm not interested you know in the regime or whatever it's going on uh theocratic system or what uh, um I really care about the people and if you look at uh, you know when when there's suffering when there's pain and out of necessity comes creativity and action and i see this coming and and if there's a thing a critical adoption rate coming i i could could seriously be iran because uh, it's like all the attack vectors you know every the the the, the 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 suffering the pain is is really like accelerating for people you know socially economically existentially and this is why I'm asking, you know, whether Iran is the prime candidate for a critical, maybe not mass adoption, but critical adoption rate in Iran. This is what I'm seeing. What's your opinion on that? Yes, I actually yes, answered I it already. With you. 
Yeah, I, I agree with you, and I see it uh, like growing on in numbers. Just uh, just how I told you about people, minors, the people who buy their newly wed daughters like stuff in Bitcoin because their daughter does not believe in like I don't know traditional things and <laughs> and the monetary system in Iran like they, it does not it, she doesn't like believe in something like that. You see, you see this attitude which is growing mostly in in in, in the younger generation but we could see it in in older people and i see a lot of uh, older people getting into it i i told you about the workshops and all of that this this was the, these are people who have been uh, like who had traditional businesses who built i don't know furniture tables chairs and all of that but nowadays they are doing mining uh, these are people who have been doing this this I don't know their their furniture business for like fifteen years or something, but they are turning into to Bitcoin. So yeah, uh, so this this I completely agree with you because this is what what is happening. This is a fact now. Mm-hmm. And go uh, you know going back to our to our, to the beginning of our conversation, I told you you know I'm, I was born in Iran and and was you know I grew up in seven years of my life over there and I came seventy nine. How old are you, uh, ZF? I'm asked. I I was born in 1992, uh, like the very last days of 1992. Okay, so I feel so really much older now than you. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, I, I'm not I'm not that old, but yeah, I, I'm I, I'm from the younger generation who is into Bitcoin. <laughs> totally, totally. You know, and I and I do remember. I mean, I do have you know memories, pictures, and and I know also from other people confirming this. It was a totally different life, and and when I talk to people, like I have friends, also I have a really uh, wonderful. She's like a sister to me, uh, a, a lady friend of mine in New York. She, she's you know married to an American. And uh, she was uh, maybe a, a, a year or two ago was in Iran, and she, you know, and she confirms like many what other P- Iranians are telling me that the country, the people have changed somehow. You know, um, maybe you, I'm not, yeah, you might not, you know, be able to confirm this, but uh, d- d- I mean, w- what is the general or w- what is your perception? What is the what is the feeling in Iran? Are, are people? Uh, do they have the urge for a change, for transformation, uh, like on every level you can think of? Yeah, well, um, th- there's there's one interesting fact which in, in the last days during the protest and this internal blackout and all of this, which may be of interest to this question of you. Uh, after, uh, like, during the time that there was a complete blackout of internet, there were some people who were like the, the tech savvy were able somehow to get some connections. I, I had sometimes some connections. We were finding some ways, but it was very difficult to stay online like one hour and then it goes down again. Uh, and during this time, the you could you could check it on Google Trends actually. The number of searches for people who wants to do migration and leave Iran has like like skyrocketed and this was the general trend or so uh, like I I could say that I know hundreds of people I only know hundreds of people so there would be a lot of people in Iran who know tens or hundreds of people who left Iran so there are a lot, like, I, I, if I was able to leave Iran, I would have left here too. So people are changing in this way. Actually, they don't believe that they could, like, live here. A lot of people need to change their, like, geographically change the, 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 this place and go somewhere else because, I don't know, maybe they don't see hope or they cannot do their business. Uh, there, there are a lot lot of reasons people who want better education they they this is very, very common in other countries to want better education go to better universities all over the world but there are a lot of people who just can't do their business here or they can't do they can't work anymore here or they cannot uh like tolerate this the situation here in iran so they 
uh, I'm, I'm not able actually to leave Iran because like most young males here in Iran, they cannot leave the country uh, uh, because of the military service thing. Uh, so mm -hmm. young males here in Iran should do a military service for two years. It's not a short amount of time. That's a lot, two years. And uh, after that, they get their, their passport. So you cannot have a passport. You are not entitled to a passport unless you do a military service. Uh, so I'm one of those young males here in, in Iran, which uh, which is which the number is very huge actually, who cannot uh, go outside of Iran, and I have never been actually outside of Iran. But I know that there are a lot of people who are facing this ob obstacle, and if it was not for this obstacle, they would have left Iran too. So you see that the if if there is a change here in Iran, it is in the attitude uh, that people they, they they are fed up with this and they cannot tolerate it. So mm -hmm. if they don't see a change, they they're gonna change the place and go somewhere else. Yeah, these stories, I mean, really touch my heart and soul, uh, to be honest with you. Um, it's really emotional for me also. But um, before I get too emotional, um, <laughs> Um, I mean, so there's a lot of people, obviously, if they, if they could, if they wanted to emigrate or, you know, leave the country, what would be more logical than whatever savings, whatever money, whatever assets they have, uh, you know, um, turn it to, you know, into Bitcoin, uh, yeah, or memorize, yeah. memorize, uh, I don't know, 12 or 24 seed phrase and leave the country. I mean, as if it's been already done in other, like in Venezuela or whatever. Yeah, yeah. This, so this has happened actually. <laughs> I get asked a lot about this actually. <laughs> like a lot of friends, they, they want to go to some other countries to, I don't know, to Canada or somewhere. And they, they, the easiest way for them to, uh, uh, the easiest way for them to go, uh, like to leave the country, is uh, and, and take their money with them, their their holdings, is to convert them to Bitcoin uh, because, like, you cannot carry cash, and uh, surely you don't have a bank account in the destination country, but uh, and you cannot hold gold. Actually, it would be a problem in the airport, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. thanks, yeah. thanks for the confirmation. Gold is a problem. I mean, how do you? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Bitcoin, it's liquid everywhere, so and it's you can you don't need to hold it physically. So yeah, it's only logical to do so. So, uh, um, <coughs> Zia, I really, I really enjoyed this talk. I really, you really touched my. I don't know, my emotions, my heart and soul. Uh, like, what is your vision now for the next years to come? Um, what's your perspective for yourself or, you know, for the people of Iran? How, what do you see coming, you know? Actually, <clears throat> I was thinking about this during the last few months because of the mining situation. And uh, I guess that we would have uh, much more people getting into Bitcoin because of the mining thing because that they could like get they could just put a device in their workshop or in their house and it is paying much more than what they are working and getting like if you have <clears throat> three devices three i don't know uh it's about like i don't know three hundred dollars now to get like an s9 device here in iran uh, four hundred dollars maybe uh, the equivalent of four hundred dollars, but if you get these devices, if you have like two or three of them, they could like pay, like they could get you uh, uh, an income more than what you can work and get paid for, uh, and it is like very convenient for a lot of people who have like a free electricity. Uh, you know what I mean by free electricity, like stealing electricity from the grid. It is somehow nowadays very easy to do in Iran because like a lot of people don't want to pay electricity. <laughs> and yeah, uh, to be honest, yeah. I understand. I mean, there's there seems to be an, an abundance and abundance of energy. I mean, with all their nuclear power plants and everything going on. I mean, I, I don't think that we have nuclear. Uh, 
an energy here in New York. Really? Okay. Oh. Yeah. I don't okay. know about, I, I never read about this, but uh, the charts that I see, like from research here in Iran, about how much of, us, of the energy is produced, like in what way, most of it is produced by gas or what okay. you call mm -hmm. uh, the thermal cycle, something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to translate what I've heard in Persian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's CHP generators and which use gas, and yeah. uh, it's mostly fossil fuel. So okay, uh, yeah, it is produced like this. And uh, so people, uh, let's get back to the question. So it's it people would get more into this because it is more convenient for them to earn money like this. Mm -hmm. So and uh, rather than work and get paid very few like amounts of money so they could just use electricity and do mining and uh i don't know if it if this is wrong right or wrong i'm not doing a com i'm not giving a comment and i'm not telling people to do this because <laughs> yeah. it is very obvious that this has some implications and it does not make sense in some like aspects uh, mm -hmm. in regard with the economics and all of that but I'm telling you that this is what what's going to happen because it is happening and I see it increasing every day. Uh, I see people who, who even don't need that much money and they are uh, in, in good like financial conditions, but they are still doing it because uh, why not do it? Because the, 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 it's, it's going to pay you more money because why not do it? Yeah. You cannot stop people from getting like from doing mining because they're going to do it anyway, like put bans and crack down on their farms and close them and shut, it, shut them down and put all kinds of silly, silly laws and all of that. There's people still going to do it because exactly. yeah. like, see, alcohol is forbidden in Iran for like four <laughs> decades now, but yeah. there is a very flourishing economy. Yeah. People, people know how to party yeah, in Iran. I heard yeah, huh? how to, how to buy and get it. <laughs> and you cannot stop them from exactly. using it, consuming it, or or even making it. Yeah. So, uh, if uh, you see this, this is the the, the na general nature of when when, when if, uh, this is what you see with a failed government that tries to ban something, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous because people are still gonna do it. It's, exactly. You cannot stop all people because they're gonna do it. So uh, this is gonna attract more users into Bitcoin in this situation of mining in Iran. So. We didn't have this back in the days. So it was mostly because of the financial situation here in Iran and in the inflation, all of that. But nowadays we have this, this one other factor, which is very attractive for people too, which adds to Bitcoin users also in Iran. And I'm gonna see a lot of, uh, I see a future with a lot of more, much more miners, which, which are gonna be underground mostly, I think. And, uh, I see a future with much more people who are getting paid with Bitcoin because it makes sense for them. I know people who do uh, graphic design and development, mm -hmm. uh, web web development and all of that, uh, developers, coders and all of that. <clears throat> they they are not uh, they are not uh, happy with the situation, and they are not happy with what they are earning. So. Uh, I see their tendency to go and work with foreigners to get paid more. And uh, I see this happening. It's going to happen. It's only logical. And I see more people doing it. I see more services offered in Bitcoin because of uh, legal issues. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we've been, like there are some like popular VPN service providers, which actually live outside of Iran. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Like this is obviously they live outside of Iran because of like it's illegal to do to give VPNs, sell VPNs to people. But I see these services, uh, uh, like these ter services target Iranians, like they want to sell VPNs to Iranians. They have like Persian manuals and applications and all of that and how to set up their VPN. And they get paid in real, but sometimes they're method of payment is closed because like the bank figures out how to like which which payment gateways they are using or, or which bank account they are using and it's all it's it's it's, it's a cat and mouse situation where 
they always set up a new payment gateway and the bank always shuts down this new one. So they start, they are starting to offering uh, VPN uh, services in Bitcoin actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've seen them like do this from a couple of years ago, or two years ago or three years ago, the first time they started accepting Bitcoin. And uh, one of them actually accepts in Lightning too. So this, this was very, yeah, this it was beautiful for me just wow. to use. This is because, amazing. Like VPN is very cheap. Uh -huh. Like these these uh, service providers, and it is much more easier to buy it with Lightning than an on-chain trans transaction. Like I don't want to do an on-chain transaction. Uh, I I just want to get a VPN like in in, in a second, just buy it and instantly. So it's much more easier to do it like this. So I see mm -hmm. services offered to Iranians with Bitcoin, uh, like how we see now VPN services and also VPS and server and digital goods offered in Bitcoin. I see people buy gift cards like uh, Google, Apple and all that for for the using apps and buying apps from like uh, different services which offer uh, offer digital goods like this in Bitcoin. They buy these uh, gift cards and vouchers and like buy apps because we, we cannot actually buy apps in any way. We, we right. are not connected to the global finance <laughs> finance network. So uh, this is this I see I see these stuff attracting more people into Bitcoin. I, I've, I I'm I'm telling you this because I've seen this happen in the, in the back in the days. Mm -hmm. like two or three years ago and now uh this may attract this 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 is gonna go on and gain much more momentum than it all it already has so interesting uh, there's an article um i'm gonna send it maybe you've already seen it uh by a guy because i was gonna ask you what role the gift cards because there's a concrete example in this article by matt Alborg, it's called Paxful is the most important Bitcoin company you aren't paying attention to. And it's about, you know, how people in Nigeria, concrete example in Nigeria, but well, I'll send it to you. It might, it just goes into a lot of Yeah, details. yeah, I heard about that actually. I heard about how people use Paxful for buying gift cards, Amazon gift cards and all of that. So I, I the other day, one of my friends tell, told me that Aren't you going to buy something? It's 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 Black Friday days and be ready and all of that. <laughs> See, this this was not something that I you would have heard like two or three years ago in Iran or all, all over Iran. I mean, like no one would have expected someone uh, like a, a user in Iran thinking of buying something from Amazon just like easily. Actually, Amazon doesn't ship to Iran, so you need to have a friend or something like a friend or I don't know, an intermediary and another place in the world to receive your packages from Amazon, then post them to you here to Iran, send them with, po with post name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like this. Yeah. Well, I have, I still have so many questions. Uh, see, it's been really, uh, I really appreciate this talk because I've never, you know, never had the chance to get some real insights and it really touches me somehow deep in my heart and soul because, you know, I come from Iran. I, I was seven years old when I came over here. So I, I do understand, you know, the pain and the suffering and also, you know, the creative potential of the Iranian people. I mean, it's a peaceful, uh, p peaceful people. And uh, I mean, if you look at our history, uh, we never attacked, I mean, anybody in the last, whatever, what, 300, 400 years. And I just wish, you know, all the people in Iran, you know, just, just joy and pleasure and, and a good life, you know, and, um, and a logical, ethical, uh, monetary root layering, as I call it. And that is the only one choice we have that is Bitcoin because it's had all the monetary properties we can even dream of, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So in closing, do you have any uh, final uh, thoughts you want to share? Uh, anything you want to uh, share with my listeners and our viewers? Yeah, definitely. So I wanted to, first I wanted to thank you so that you gave me a chance. I'm very happy to get like get a chance to share my experience here in Iran with the rest of the world. And uh, thank you for this opportunity. And also, I wanted to say that uh, like there are a couple of ways that the Iranians could 
would love to see in the Bitcoin ecosystem. One is much more like digital goods that we can buy with Bitcoin. Like uh, there are services like Bitrefill, and I, I saw another one which I cannot remember. I can't remember the name of which sell digital goods like vouchers and all of that. So we, we love these stuff because we didn't have access to them. And now we, with Bitcoin, we can access them and, and, and they solve like problems for us here. Like we cannot have access to uh, a bank account, PayPal, Visa, Master, anything. So if, if we can get gift cards, we can buy them anonymously and we cannot, we can pretend not to be Iranians on that service and use them. Like I see people nowadays buying like Spotify accounts and all of like the, the, these things matter. These things also uh, like raise the adoption rate also too. And one other, th uh, uh, two, two more things would be one uh, is we need much more of uh, uh, more companies and more websites which deliver goods like deliver physical goods to your own like mm -hmm. in any way like if, if there's a premium on it and there's like an intermediary here in between it would be very good but like it would be great for us like to buy like we could if we could buy books and receive them here and you know, or if we could buy like digital uh digital uh goods overall uh I mean, I mean, uh, smartphones, tablets, or something like that, because nowadays we can oh, now we cannot do this, and uh, like everything here in Iran has a premium. If you if you can buy it directly, uh, like uh, it would be much more cheaper. Like, like I know some 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 smartphones here in Iran have like a two hundred, like a twenty percent uh, premium on them. So if you can buy them directly you, you won't pay we won't be paying this premium and that uh, we are very uh, uh like like we will be very pleased if we pay only a two or five percent premium rather than a 20 percent so exactly yeah. that would be great and uh, the last point would be uh that we need much more educational stuff in in persian so this is on us actually also. So we are doing it here, uh, translating uh, like manuals and translating websites into Persian. But we need more of like, we need uh, some attention from others. Like if there's like companies or, or like, I, I love Bitcoin Magazine for this uh, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, I, I've seen Bitcoin Magazine uh, helping in this way uh, with like talking about Iran and trying to demystify what happens here in Iran. I, I hope that others would get uh, CoinDesk also. CoinDesk would uh, and and Lee Lee, you know Lee Lee Quinn. She's very interested in and in, she was very interested. Oh yeah, in Iran, yeah. Still is. Uh, she wrote a lot about Iran and and and, uh, and uh, I thank her from here for doing this. And I I I would love to see more people doing this, getting in touch with Iran and. Uh, like we could be heard because it, like right now um, we, like very similar to the protest situation like most people all over the world don't know what's happening in Iran so with the Bitcoin situation would be like this too if we are not accessed uh, and if we if we if we don't get forwarded uh, by like a famous uh, journals or uh, outlets and all of that yeah i mean i can only i totally agree i mean i, I mean i told I, and i really call upon my my listen to be if, if any if anyone is you know like entrepreneur investor company uh providing services products um you know or any kind of creative uh implementation of an id you know then this is the timing this is this is i mean this is it needs initiative action it needs uh you know, cooperation, collaboration, that's also, I mean, I'm trying, I see also myself at the total connect. I'm trying to connect the dots, connect people. So, and I hope I'm going to get you back soon. Like, I really want to connect you also maybe on, on a panel discussion with other people. And maybe, you know, this, this could, uh, you know, trigger a fruitful, not only fruitful discussion, but, but f uh, fruitful results, <laughs> you know, um, for the future. Um, 
of people in Iran and of yourself, you know. So you. yeah, yeah. I hope I hope to see this too. Yeah. So Zia, thank you so much for your time and for for sharing your knowledge, your insights, your wisdom, and and you know, and and I, I cannot appreciate that enough. So um, let's just stay in touch, and wish you all the yeah, best. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you for having me and. Uh, uh thank you for 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 the listeners to care about your own to see what's going on in your own yeah totally <laughs> all right Leo. thank you so much and bye bye bye, bye, bye. see you <laughs> welcome to the podcast show by kevan davani the total connector total bitcoin awesome economics the hardest and scarcest money ever created in human history Bitcoin.